Senator Capito, thank you so much for being with us. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Senator. Well, this is obviously a uh, heated time uh, around the world. We've uh, got as much turmoil as we've had uh, in, in the last uh, a few years here, and that includes what's going on in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., in uh, the Gaza Strip, and also still in the Ukraine, of course, Senator Capito. Uh, first and foremost, what are you hearing about the House of Representatives, if anything, right now? All I'm hearing is a whole lot of dysfunction. Uh, there's a lot of finger pointing, a lot of you can see the uh, tension levels are rising by the public statements that people are making. Um, it, it's you know, I said yesterday, it's it's embarrassing to me. We've been elected to lead as Republicans and they they can't seem to find a leader. And, and so I think cooler heads have to prevail here. This is serious times. We need a speaker of the House of Representatives. And I don't think it's going to be. Jim Jordan. I think it, these first two votes are pretty indicative of that. So look, we got to move to plan plan C now and uh, find somebody that can be a consensus candidate. Is anything around the world being affected by what's going on in the House of Representatives? You know, I think that's a very good question, Rob, because uh, in the short term, no, because we have our funding. All of that is Still moving forward until November the 17th. But in the broader picture, yes, I think we look weak. Uh, we look dysfunctional. We look uh, almost uh, third worldish in the way we're uh, not functioning properly. Uh, I, I can't remember a time where uh, any, anything like this obviously has ever happened, but where we are, are transmitting to the world that we're not ready to uh, be the leader that we need to be. And so I do think it's harmful. Uh, in, in a lot of sense, but less so on the spending part or the continuation of government, but more on the world stage as the leader. Bill. Yeah. Good morning, Senator. I uh, I thought that the um, uh, the president's uh, speech last night, or talk last night, uh, framed it quite well that we do have an obligation, uh, both a, uh, I think, a, a moral obligation and certainly a, uh, a supportive obligation to both Ukraine and Israel. And he was putting them together as a package. I get the impression that you kind of, you feel the same way, that we should should look at this as a package. Is that correct? Well, I have looked at uh, our support of Ukraine as something that is in our own uh, national security interests. Uh, we know that a weakened Putin is is in our best interest. We know that uh, that Ukraine's ability to fight back uh, miraculously in their own right uh, using our weapons has been nothing short of astounding to I think the world stage. And I think that uh, we need to continue this for our own interests. We don't have boots on the ground there. And as you know, as a former military uh, person, that that is exceedingly important. And then as we look unexpectedly to what's happened in Israel, we've always been a staunch supporter of Israel. They're the beacon of freedom and democracy. We are good friends and have been for years, and I've supported Israel. So I think tying these together probably does make sense. Uh, I think that it's going to be a very large package, which is going to be a, hard for the American people to to swallow here. So I think we need to see how it evolves next week and when the, a president actually sends his package up. Michael Heights. Good morning, Senator. Uh, I'm going to begin by um, by giving you some mad props on your parenting skills. I have the pleasure of serving with your son, and that is one quality individual. So congratulations on, on that. Well, thank you. We're proud of Moore's efforts running for governor, as you know, Michael. And uh, But besides that, he's just a, a great guy. He is. He really is. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, in the House, we have some, some congressmen or congresswomen, uh, Tlaib in particular, that have come out and spoke in, um, in defense of Hamas and, and pro-Palestinian comments um, and have even had to backtrack some of their statements here recently. Um, let me get your take on that. And do you see any of the uh, people in the Senate doing that as well? I do not see any any people in the Senate doing that. I mean, let's call this what it is. It's an Iran-backed terrorist attack on free and innocent people. And for her to lead to, uh, to uh, try to defend that as some sort of legitimate way to express yourself 
is, in my view, uh, just almost horrifying in it, in, on the face of it. I had a meeting yesterday with two relatives of uh, – one was a three-year-old and one is a married couple close to my age who are now hostages in uh, Gaza. They have no idea where they are. The three-year-old was taken after her mother and her father – were killed in front of her and take it. How can that ever be a legitimate uh, way to express yourself or to uh, to even try to get your own way? I mean, I, I just think if you look at the faces of just those two families, tells me every day, I'm going to carry the pictures around with me every day for the next, until they're home, hopefully home, uh, because these stories need to be told. Uh, Senator, kind of picking up on what uh, Mike Height said, uh, one of the real issues, I believe, is trying to differentiate between Hamas and the uh, and the residents of Gaza, the Palestinians. Uh, is there is there a possible a possibility of putting any space, any light between the two right now, as long as Hamas is in occupied Gaza? Well, I think all of us know that there are many millions of innocent people living in the Gaza Strip, the Gazans that live there. We have to remember, Bill, that they did elect Hamas as their governing body. So they are intertwined. But in the same sense, they're not the terrorist sect that's backed by Iran. Uh, these are uh, uh, well-trained, well-equipped and it was it was unbelievable that they were able to attack Israel totally without any kind of intelligence, uh, which is a, an intelligence failure. And I'm sure you would agree with me there uh, on Israel's part. And so, yes, I think you see the warnings coming out of Israel for them to uh, evacuate to the south uh, to try to get out that way of Gaza, because they're warning we're coming in and we're going to we are going to kill uh, Hamas. Uh, you know, at, at the throat. And, you know, we know that Hamas embeds themselves in hospitals and schools. So I have a lot of sympathy for the Gazan people, and I hope that many of them can get out of harm's way. You mentioned the intelligence failure. Uh, obviously, the pictures we've seen of the cruelty uh, to the Israelis uh, will be something the image will never forget. But the greatest surprise is the fact that the intelligent community was caught totally off guard. Apparently they were in both the U.S. and also Israel. That is the that is all of the briefings that I have point to that. And I think we're all astounded because we've always pointed to the Israeli Defense Forces and their uh, and the Mossad and others, their intelligence uh, apparatus as some of the most sophisticated for good reason, because Israel is always under attack, whether it's in the north by Hezbollah or whether, uh, you know, Hamas and other terrorist, terrorist groups. And, and so, uh, yes, I, I, I do think it was a major uh, failure. Iran says they weren't involved. That is, stretches beyond the imagination for me. And, uh, and so I think they were involved. And, uh, but the planning of this obviously was, was very, um, very good if this was their intended desired result, which it seems that it is, because they're picking up papers and everything from the killed Hamas terrorists that, you know, kill as many people, attack, attack, attack. Uh, and so they were able to do it without being hindered by any the Iron Dome or anything else. Senator Capito, thank you so much for your time this morning. Very much appreciated. All right. Thank you all. Have a good weekend. Thank, thank you, Senator. Senator.